Good morning, everybody. Today, we're going to be learning about the social issues that women, children, and immigrants faced from 1877 to 1898. That's the Gilded Age. What we're really going to find out is what was daily life like for women, children, and immigrants that were living in urban areas of the United States in the late 19th century. There's two terms that you should know for this lesson. The first is urbanization on the top, the migration of people to live in cities. And then the second one is urban. That's the one there on the bottom, relating to cities and heavily populated areas. We've used these two terms in class before when we talked about where immigrants settled once they got to the United States. The first section I'm going to discuss with you here is women in the Gilded Age. So you'll learn a little bit more about their social issues and their experiences as women. Many young single women worked in factories that made things like textiles. These women on the image you see on the right, they have an employment with a company that makes clothing, hats, dresses out of cotton. So they take textiles and they make them into clothing. Their wages here were typically lower than a man's wage. So if a man did the same job, the women would get paid a little bit less. The women were usually young. They were usually unmarried. And many of them had to get permission from their parents to go work in these kinds of places in the Gilded Age. This is a younger woman. She's also working in a textile plant. And some were even children like this one you see here. Now, some women didn't live in urban areas. They, they lived out in the rural areas of our country. Rural means the farmland. So some of them settled in the Midwest with their husbands, and uh, many of them were searching for available farmland. So these women you see here with their husbands, they lived in a place called Kansas. And they're a group of African-American people that left the South at that time called Exodusters. Exodusters left to go find cheap land in places like Kansas. These women you see here with their family members are also in the Midwest, but they're in a state called Nebraska. The Midwest of the United States, remember, is the middle of the country, the middle of the West, if you want to call it. And they live here on a farm. So as you can tell, the lives of women in the city were very different from the lives of women on the farm. As you can imagine, some of the duties they had here were nothing like the duties that women had in jobs in the city. Children are the next group I'm going to discuss with you. And children worked, majority of them, worked in factories performing dangerous jobs for lower wages than adult workers. Now, those children who did have to work like this one, they often did dangerous, sometimes really hazardous things at their job. They, they got into machines, for example. They climbed in and reached for things that were far away for an adult-sized person to go grab. So a lot of these children would get into accidents and some of them would even die on the job because it was a dangerous job. Now, working in factories and mines like these children uh, provided also a lot of health hazards, a lot of poisonous gases, for example, poor ventilation. Uh, some of them didn't get breaks. Some of them had to work really, really hard. Now, as more and more people in the 20th century saw that these children were working in these really bad working conditions, a lot of them asked for reforms. So reforms means changes. So a lot of them asked their governments for changes. A lot of them asked factory owners for changes. But many communities actually decided to do it themselves, and they started enacting, that means creating, compulsory or mandatory education for young children. So instead of having to go work, many children were now going to school. And please make sure you understand, not every child worked in the Gilded Age, but many children had to, to support the wages of their family. Immigrants, as we've discussed before, also had social issues going on during this time. Many immigrants settled down in cities that were crowded, and the living conditions in those cities were often unhealthy. Uh, many cities lacked services, for example, running water and sanitation. So a lot of people lived in squalor. Squalor means really poor living conditions. Now, a lot of these immigrants decided that this would be the best place to live based on their income. Remember, a lot of these immigrants didn't have a whole lot of skills. So the proximity of people in cities was actually what was facilitating or helping the spread of diseases. And the poverty that resulted from these places also helped create higher crime rates. So a lot of people were competing for the same resources, and that might have contributed to the rise of crime in some cities like New York. 
This image here shows you one of those tenements that I was discussing with you in class where a lot of these immigrants would settle down. And many communities actually, as the 20th century approached, decided it was too bad to live in cities without some kind of security or police force. So at the 20th century, a few communities actually began to create their own local police forces and their own fire departments. So for example, in this photograph, you see a police force. And those departments began to address some of the issues that were going on with sanitation. That means the, the filth and the dirtiness of the cities and city violation, city code violations. So, for example, buildings that didn't have fire escapes. Those are some of those city code violations. Some immigrants decided that it was best for them to live with people from their own old countries. So these people, for example, in the photo. They lived in an ethnic neighborhood that was established in New York called Little Italy. And as you can tell by the sign on the window, this is an Italian neighborhood, a neighborhood with ethnic Italians living there. So the big idea of this whole thing that you need to leave with today is that many immigrants, including women and including children, faced challenges during the Gilded Age. That means they had a hard time. Living in urban areas presented many hardships. It was difficult to live there. But it also presented many opportunities for these groups of people. If you thought about this throughout the unit, you thought about how they left a really bad living condition at home back in the old country, and they came here to the U.S. with hopes and dreams to make a better life. And even though it was a difficult transition, for a lot of them it was much better than the place they left behind. The social issues these groups faced were very similar. A lot of them had the same kinds of problems, but each group confronted them in unique ways. They reacted to them in different ways. So let's practice some star questions to see if you understood this unit on migration. Here's an old question from a star test that says, the Chinese Exclusion Act of 1882 was primarily a response to A, increased presence in China, increased U.S. presence in China, B, competition for jobs on the West Coast, C, rapid population growth in the Northeast, D, China's actions during the Boxer Rebellion. So go ahead and pick your answer. Let's see if you're right. Okay, you picked your answer. Let's see if you're right. B, competition for jobs on the West Coast is what the Chinese Exclusion Act was primarily a response to, people competing for the same jobs. Let's try another one. Here you have an excerpt in the box, and then you have a question down here that says, what was the main reason given for the creation of these restrictions? Is it F, preventing the depletion of natural resources? Is it G, discouraging anti-American activism? Is it H, reducing competition for U.S. jobs? Or is it J, addressing a lack of urban housing? So go ahead and read the excerpt and figure out which one of these best describes what was going on here. Okay, you picked your answer. Let's see if you were right. H, reducing competitions for U.S. jobs. That's why this Chinese Exclusion Act, this restriction, was enacted. Let's try another one. We've seen this image in class already. Now it has a caption on the bottom that says they would close to the newcomer the bridge that carried them and their fathers over. Which group of people most likely inspired the creation of this 1893 cartoon? In other words, why did this cartoonist create this cartoon in response to which group? Union leaders, philanthropists, political bosses, or nativists? Go ahead and pick your answer. Let's see if you're right. All right, it's nativists. Good job. And here's a final question. This one asks, 19th century nativist organizations advocated for limiting federal military power through the organization of local militias, conserving natural resources through the creation of national parks, globalizing the economy through participation in free trade agreements, or promoting an ethnically homogenous society through restrictions on immigration. Which one of these is the answer? Go ahead and pick. All right, you ready? Okay, let's see if you were right. Good work. There's your answer. Good job. Well, I hope you learned something new today about the social conditions that a lot of these women, children, and immigrants had to live in once they arrived in the United States. Have a good day.